Uh, so tonight what we're talking about is it is now most people's end of their season. Um, if not, congratulations on playing your state championship game because it's probably, what, does November 31st or... Yeah, we're November 30th-ish when this comes out. So congratulations to you for still having another game. But most people are in their off season now and they're kind of... They're looking for that guideline the how-to guide to off-season. And so that's what we want to get you started on tonight. And But we're going to talk about X's and O's and exactly how you need to go about uh, the titles reviewing and updating your system. So that's exactly what we want to do. We, we want to walk through that process um, and, and let you understand that your system's probably not that broken. And there's things that you need to look for to ensure that you're getting the most out of your system next year and what you can kind of do this off-season to get it ready for Spring ball, if you get spring ball, if not, then those first two or three team camps and, and jump right back into your system and it'll be better next year for better results. Whatever your results were, we want to add to the win column. So question number one, why you shouldn't throw out your system? So funny thing about this question is it, that was not the question. It was, uh, <laughs> should you throw it out? And then we talked for a moment and Joe said, yeah, well, let's just, you shouldn't, honestly, right? So why is that, Joe? Well, it... it you there are times when you should, but it's very likely that your system. I guess what we really want to caution you from is jumping from system to system. Because quite honestly, if you are having to jump from one, you know, let's just say defense. If you're jumping from one defense to another every year because of who your players are or because of you know this or that you don't really have a system so if you have a system it should be your system for years to come if you don't have a system the way to tell is we got to change this year because you know, these kids, you know, this year we're going to do, we have this and this. our systems are underlying principles. The system at JDFB defensively is umbrella, coach simple, umbrella run fits, you know, ASCA, it is levers, it is, you know, studying the game plan, it is attacking with blitzes. Uh, attack, you know, attacking on three levels, base, movement, blitzes, all of those things are the system and the numbers behind it, 4-2, four, 4-3, four, three, 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 four, they don't matter. It's, it's, that's, the, that's the outer shell. That's the look. Uh, that's, that's changing the names of what you call the players, but ultimately you've got 11 guys, six or seven of them are spilling the football, Two of them are forcing the football. Two of them are staying in coverage. One of them is filling the alley. And if you have a seven-man front like a 4-3, that guy is just a spill player. He, he serves the same purpose. So you don't have to change the system. Offensively, the system is inside zone blocking, outside zone blocking, power blocking, counter blocking, truck toss blocking, five run plays. It is hitch seam. It is slant, flat. Those are our quick game concepts, and then we tag them for our other looks. It is, uh, and again, we use numbers, but it is smash concept. It is post out. It is curl flat. It is deep out. Um, okay. That is five drop back passing concepts, two quick game concepts, five run concepts. That's the system. Now, whether we do it from 10 personnel, 11 personnel, 12 personnel, 21 personnel, 22 personnel, 32 personnel, that doesn't matter. That's that's just window dressing. We don't have a tight end this year. Okay. First of all, you probably do. But a lot of coaches just don't want to use a tight end for whatever reason. And that's fine. We spent half the year this year in 10 per the last two years we've been in 10 personnel more than I've ever been in my life. Um, and you know, do I love it? No, I want to have a tight end and an H back. But it's who we are, it's where we're at. Our quarterback was very good with zone read as an example. He's very good with speed option. Zone read and speed option are not the core of the offense, but they're very easy to do. 
they're, they're very easy to use our blocking and run it. And so the, what happens is we don't ever change the system. The system should adapt. So if you have a good system, you don't change it. If you don't have a system right now, based on the things that I just laid out, you need a system, but you can probably apply the things that make your system into a system by, you can just fix what you have right now. And so you may, like, let's say that you go with JDFB and you come to JDFB and you say, we're going to, we're going to install JDFB system. You may have been a, a, let's just say a three, three stack last year. It's not that you need to not be a three, three stack. You need to fix your three, three. Uh, and I think a lot of coaches go, all oh, the three, three didn't work. That's one of the things that frustrates me with what I do is I want coaches to send their film because there's a good chance that you're missing some key components. And I want to look at it and I want to say, uh, you know, fix this. Uh, and, and I don't like when coaches, I don't, I, I can't stop you. And I'm not going to tell you not to, I don't like when coaches kind of just sign up and disappear, you know, come on the chalk talks. So why do we do all these chalk talks and chalkboard forum? And why do we, so I can answer questions because I don't want somebody out there to go, well, the JDFB system doesn't work. It works, right. I promise you. But you may be, you know, I get guys all the time who are like, we're going to run, we're going to, we're going to combine. You've done it. We're going to combine. And sometimes you have to, we're going to combine this with that. We're going to combine your offense with, we're going to, I get this one. We're going to run your offense, which is a very high level run game. Very detailed. And we're going to run air raid passing, which is very high level detailed passing attack. There's a reason that our run, our passing attack, which is very capable, isn't that complex. It's, it's, it, at the end of the day, it can do everything we need it to do. It doesn't need to be complex. I think that's, that's overly, that's a waste of time. Um, but you know, we, we, and we throw the ball plenty, um, sometimes more than we run. But the, the, the thing about our, it's not so much one is complex and one is not. It's if you run an air raid style passing attack, this, one of the things in our system is that the run game blocking, the zone scheme transfers over to the play action and pass protection for drop back passing. And so if you use a different system, you have to teach a whole new thing. If you if you if you pull in a play that doesn't use our blocking, you're gonna have to teach a whole new thing. Um, I can adapt it, and I can. Have, so, the big thing is right now what you need to be deciding is if you are if you are changing, it's probably because you don't have a system or whatever system that you think you have is broken. That's the only reason to change, and so broken that you just can't fix it. The only reason that I can see to to change systems is that either what you have right now isn't one or you, your coaches, your players have just completely lost any semblance of confidence in what you have right now because it was so bad. And if you come in there next year, let's say that you were, let's, let, let's, let's pick an offense that never fails. Let's say that you were a double wing offense last year. So we can say this in pure hypothetical because it always works. Let's say that you were a double wing offense last year and it didn't work. And it was so bad that if you go out there in the spring and start installing the double wing again, kids are just going to turn to walk off the field because it was that bad for you. Then you need a new offense. But you need to be looking at that offense, not from the standpoint of, I need to find what's going to work for our kids this year. You should be looking we don't run starter offenses. We buy forever offenses. We, you don't move again. You need to find one that you can be in forever. You need to find one that you can run forever. Most, I'll say that most of the ones that are out there, whether it's me, whether it's Kenny, and offense or defense, the stuff that is out there, whether it's me, whether it's Kenny, whether it's, you know, whether it's Rick or, or whoever, if you 
I think that in today's world, to try to build your system is foolish. You can start with the foundation, and then your system can become what it becomes um, through through experimentation, through pulling levers. It will end up looking different than than what I run. If you run somebody else's offense or somebody else's defense, it it will evolve. Um, and it will look different. I, I look at film every single week. Very few of the, you know, I, I get, I get 15, four, two, five defense films in a week and I, they don't look the same. They, they probably should look more, more like than they do sometimes, but teams are using multiple front and jumping into a three, three, or somebody's jumping into a four, three for blitz angles, or somebody's running cover one, somebody's running quarter, somebody's running cover three, somebody's using a lot of stunts and blitzes. Somebody runs nothing but base. They're going to end up looking very different. They will have your own feel and your own. Um, but the systems that are out there and that are available, and I can't speak to all of them, but I, you know, with Kenny, Rick, I do, I do know, um, Tony Franklin system. Uh, I do know those are forever systems. Pistol power offense system is a per- forever system. You, you can marry it and you can stay in it and you, from year to year, it won't change. Same thing. Four, two, five defense, three, three, you know, we can move JDFB defense is forever and you can jump from front to front and it's fine because the underlying principles will be there. But when you, if you decide to change this year, most likely what you have right now can be fixed um, and improved. But if you decide to change this off season, you need to take the time to make sure this is going to be my forever system from now on. I'm not, I'm not changing again. This is it. The, idea of trying to hybridize them even uh i don't know man like i the more i look at it the more i try to combine the systems that i'm a part of i don't i think you just almost have to go with one until you are so educated in it that you add the other system as a wrinkle even like it's it's become very hard to hybridize i dealt with it this year trying to do a hybrid of of jdfb defense and then the defense that the staff i was on wanted right uh, I've just sat down and drawn plays and just, you know, chalk, chalk ward myself and, and, and looked at combining the, the gun T and the, uh, pistol power offense. And I don't, I think you just got to get in one and go and, yeah. and it should be an education for you. That's, that's the, the best thing that I got out of JDFB was the, the education of how to coach every single position. It should be a system that's so thorough that you can educate coaches with your system. It shouldn't be the the pat the, the X's and O's only, right? It's got to be yeah. everything. The and X's and O's don't matter. It should it's, teach so you how to think yeah. about football um, to the point that you can problem solve on the fly, which is my big thing. You got to be able to problem solve on the fly. So, I think um, one of the things that coaches who are are not there yet, or who don't or don't haven't ever had a true system. You get the drills, you get the practice plans, you get game plan ideas. You'll see us running it against, you know, hey, you know, here's what it looks like against a three, four. Here's what it looks like against a three, three, or here's what it looks like defending a wing T. Here's what it looks like. We have all that film. We have all that done. It's been done. You don't have to, if you are inventing, you're missing the boat. There's no reason to be inventing. Your system should be complete. And I absolutely, I will absolutely um, agree with you on this. And, and there's a lot of things. I love wing T. One of the things that, that I love, I love wing T. I love double wing. One of the most exciting things for me uh, as an offensive coordinator is when we will play those teams, because I know our system so well that I can create all of those plays in using our system and our terminology. And then I'm standing back there running a wing T for that week. You know, sometimes I got to run buck sweep and you're right. I can, because I have run this system now, for uh, I have coached or, or not as a coordinator, but I've been coaching in the system since I, I want to say 2007, uh, 2007 or 2008. And uh, sorry, as far as offense, as far as Bill Mountjoy's offense, uh, which became the pistol power offense system. Uh, and, and I get to spend all of this time working with other coaches. And, you know, a lot of what I do is, Hey, my head coach really wants this. And I go, all right, here's how we can create it. And we're not going to, you know, run two different offenses, but we're going to create what he wants using what we have. We're going to reuse assets, uh, and keep it simple for our players. Um, I, I run again. I create every single scout team. I create the 
plays using our terminology and the things that we do. So I've run uh, superpower and I've run buck sweep and I've run all of those things. And it's not that hard. We can execute it. And so because I've been doing this system for so long uh, and I can tag all of our, you, you come up with any air raid concept you want. I can run that exact route concept. I can use tags to create that exact route concept. You know, I run and shoot like option routes and stuff. I don't have that shot in my bag, but um, I can create the look of the, of most of it. Um, I could create because I know this system so well after 15, 16 years of running it and teaching it to others, I can create absolutely any, any player that I want and, and have probably done it. There's not much that I haven't done. Um, can I run option? Could I go in there and run split back beer? Yeah. In some capacity. Yeah. Um, you know, it wouldn't be perfect. It wouldn't be great, but it'd be, I can make it work and you know, I wouldn't recommend that, but, um, you know, I could do it in practice. I wouldn't make it my base play, but yeah, once you get to know a system, you can create within it. Systems should not be limiting. And I think that's one of the other things that, that coaches misunderstand. Oh, I don't want to be trapped in this system. First of all, you shouldn't be inventing your own. There's no reason to, it's been done and you're going to save yourself a lot of headache by skipping all of that and getting what somebody else has done. And then you can make it your own. Time will make it your own, but you'll start out skipping a lot of the headache and the first year of, you know, all the problems and, and it, you know, having to pull so many levers that you shouldn't have had to pull because they should have already been known. Uh, they, they, you could have already, somebody would have just told you here's what to do. Um, you shouldn't, you, you should not create your own system. You should not change your system from year to year. It should be your forever system. Um, and your system should not limit you at all. Your system should be a good system allows you, like I said, I can create any offense I want with I, any look that I want within our offensive system. And I can run any defense that I need to, or that I want to with our underlying principles and our defensive systems. Now there is zero limitation placed on me. I understand those very deeply, not just from coaching them. I have, again, I have an advantage because I've taught these systems to so many, to thousands of coaches. I've looked at them from so many different angles. I've had them torn apart by everybody. I go into a game knowing that the guy on the other sideline has can look up my, my offense. Right. He can literally go pay a dollar and have my offense somewhat. So I, I, I go in knowing those things. And um, so it's a little bit, I, I, I've, I've built that experience up faster than just being on the sidelines. But there's zero limitation. I can create anything I want. I can create any look I want. I can do anything I want. Um, the only limitation is teaching it, teaching it to the kids, teaching it to, to getting the other coaches on staff. You are limited by the other coaches on staff because one guy can't go out and coach nine positions. You've got to get everybody to, so how good can you teach your staff members? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, there's the, they, they, you don't need to create it from scratch. It should never change. It should stay the same. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't stay the same, but the, 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 the system itself stays the same. There's, there's a hierarchy, which we totally skipped over there. There's a hierarchy of system of, of, of I call it the hier hierarchy of the playbook because everybody comes in, they go, coach, I want your four, two, five playbook here. It's totally worthless. Good luck. Bye. It's totally worthless. There's nothing in there about the underlying principles. There's just X's and O's on a page. Great. It, it tells you nothing about how to win with that defense. Right. And then you're the guy who's going, oh, the 425 defense doesn't work. No, it doesn't because you don't know how to coach it. You didn't bother getting into that. You've got a, play, you got a playbook, a printed playbook. The hierarchy of the playbook is the system is everything that you can do. And what will happen over time is you may start with a very simple system. And then as you learn, your system will grow. So in a game plan, I installed a blitz that I needed that I felt like would attack this particular front or look or whatever that wasn't originally in the system, but I used parts that we already had to create this look, create this blitz, create this front, whatever. Well, now that becomes in the system. Um, Charger Bolt is our, uh, you know, that is our, our, our um, double wing defense. And I got that from Rick Stewart. That's in the system now, but it wasn't originally a part of the system. Right. So your system will continue to grow. Your system is everything that you can do. 
and it will grow from year to year to year. It will grow during the year. Your playbook is the things that you say, this year, this is who, who we are going to be. So I look at my offense. I go, I got, a, I got a quarterback that can run. I want him to be involved in the run game. Um, you know, I, I look back 2017, 2018, our quarterback never ran. I never wanted him to run. He was 140 pounds. He could throw. He could sling it. I did not want him running. He could run a little. Now he snuck. He, he ran quarterback sneak like, like nobody's been like Tom Brady. But that was the only run play that he had. It, it, no, it was it was impressive. But that was the only run play that, that he had in the entire playbook. Um, so, you know, in that particular season, there was always a tight end on the field. Why? Because that tight end uh, was a college football player. He was a long time for Virginia Tech. Um, but he was a D2 linebacker, an all-region all linebacker, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I had an H back. So we were, we were 20, you know, you know, hybrid, but 21 personnel a lot of the time, essentially 21 and 11 personnel all the time. Um, quarterback never ran under center a lot pistol. Okay. I go this year, quarterback or last year quarterback is I want him running the ball. Don't really have somebody that necessarily fits the tight end role right now. We're in 10 personnel. We're in shotgun. We're running a lot of zone read. Under center inside zone play is not in the playbook. It's in the system because we ran the hell out of it in years past, but it's not in the playbook this year. You know, I, I work with a lot of youth coaches who have our pistol power offense system, but their youth playbook is power, counter, wedge, toss, a power pass, and maybe like a hitch, right? So their playbook is very, very small. And they're very successful with it. The game plan is the things from that playbook. So the playbook is what I have for the year. The game plan is the collection of the plays that are in the playbook that I have with dressed up with some motions and formations and everything. And that's what I'm going to run this week. And then the play call is what I'm going to run on that snap on that down. That is the perfect call to attack this defense based on what they're showing me, based on the weaknesses that I've identified. This is the play call that I want to have. So you have the system, which is very large, all encompassing. It never changes. The playbook from year to year is going to pull the things from the system that I think that I need for that year based on the personnel that we have. Oftentimes you'll have a playbook that's plan A and plan A will not make it to week six. Um, you know, it, 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 you end up on plan B, plan C and, and wherever else you go. The game plan is the game plan for that week pulled from the playbook. And then the play that you call is looking at that call sheet with that game plan on it. This is the one for right now. So the system uh, never be limiting. Right. One, one last thing here about why you shouldn't throw out your system and then we'll, we'll move on to the next question. And I do think it's, uh, if I've found out anything in my first four years of coaching, it's that there's a lot of coaches out there that don't know how to coach. And so even if, you buy the Pistol Power offense today. You go to join.joedanielfootball.com, get access for $1, you get 7 bucks. you study the P uh, Pistol Power offense for seven days, you love it, you stay for the rest of the year. Great. But if you don't pass that knowledge on to your other coaches, you can't run every drill. If you're the head coach, you have got two sides of the ball to worry about. If you're the coordinator, you have five, six, seven positions, or, or 11 if you want to consider every, every player – uh, and then if you're, a, you know, a, one of the position coaches, you're not probably going to sell it to everyone your first year anyways. But my point is, if, it doesn't matter what system you have. If you, We say all the time, coach what you know. So if you don't know it, my high school coach ran the, the double wing. Great. Do you know all of the ins and outs? Because if not, nostalgia is not going to carry you anywhere. It doesn't matter how much you love the system. It's not going to get you even to your ceiling that year, right? You're going to fall short because you don't know what you're doing. So I just implore you to go out and get an education in the system you're in. Go find someone that runs it. If it's one of the four defensive systems, go to get JDFB, right? If it's uh, it, whatever your offensive system is, it doesn't matter. Find someone that runs it and, and that has a system for you and go learn it. Use that as an education because if not, you're going to spend the next several years blaming the kids blaming the other coaches, uh, and it's you while you jump from playbook to playbook to playbook thinking, oh, the RPOs, man, the RPOs are where it's at this year. We really have to just RPO everything. So we're going to keep running the same thing we don't know how to coach, and we're going to add another wrinkle that we don't know how to coach. So go out and educate yourself. Um, learn the system in and out before you make an assessment on it. 
And you know what? If you get Spring Ball and you still don't know how to install it, I, maybe that's the time. I, I don't know what to tell you. Have a plan B, I suppose. Um, but football is very simple. And it, the more systems I see, the more I realize we're all just running the same stuff. So it doesn't matter. There's just gap scheme and zone, zone scheme running, right? You're not, you're not making up a new scheme of running. You're doing one of those two things. Um, you can pretend. You can be like, well, it's insert. So ah, is that gap or is that zone? Well, come on. It's the same stuff, man. We, <clears throat> for, for to, to understand how simple this game is, and I will say that Huddle thankfully trained her on the basics of the game, but I have trained other uh, assistants overseas who have never seen a football game how to tag the basics of the game. And now I've taught someone who doesn't watch football, has never played football, um, and she can tag every play in our library from from places all over the world uh, and every offense, and she does it using five run plays. She has five run plays and then tags off of them. So, like, if it's buck sweep, we, we call power 24. If you run counter, we call it 24 counter. That's So we call it – that's our GH counter, garden, garden uh, H-back. If you run GT counter, we call it 24 GT, 24 counter to the right. We call it 24 GT counter. If you run buck sweep, we call it 24 buck. Every single, all of those plays are down, down, kick out, wrap. Yeah. All of those plays are down, down, kick out, wrap. And with, with the addition of H backs, power is now down, down, kick out, wrap. Like it's. <laughs> right. It's all the same stuff. It, yeah. Power is power counter, uh, GH counter, GT counter, GY counter. Uh, belly. You, belly is the same thing. Like yes. you're not, you're not changing the game. It's the same plays. If you don't pull some, but she, the rules that she has are basically, uh, very simple on those plays. Uh, there is a sheet of diagrams uh, that she was given that was, okay, so like, for example, uh, plays that are run inside, um, 10 sneak, that's quarterback sneak. Right. 20 trap is if the guard pulls by himself and kicks out the, the guy over top of the, a short trap, an inside trap play. Um, so there's 10 sneak, there's 20 trap. There's 22 and 23, the rule is if nobody pulls, it's a 22 or a 23. And then it can be 22 or 23, which is just inside zone. It can be 22 or 23 lead uh, if it's an ISO. If it can be 22 or 23 kick, if you bring the H back across the formation and kick out the backside or somebody else kicks out the backside. Uh, it can be 12 or 13 read if they don't block the end man and she sees the quarterback staring at that guy who's not blocked. That is 12 or 13 read. The rules are very simple, and it took literally weeks to teach somebody all of this, and and well above ninety percent accuracy. This is not a complicated game. We not make it complicated. Yes. Um, we'll jump to the next question. I'm sure, people are tired of uh, hearing about why they shouldn't, because they probably hate their playbook, which is why they're listening to this. So, how do you evaluate your system to make those corrections? So we've said, don't throw it out. Keep the playbook. Keep the the system. How do we evaluate that system to make corrections? What are we looking for? I think the first thing you want to figure out is what went wrong. And you have, you have to have a very, very honest evaluation of what went wrong. What were the problems? Uh, Lynn Shackelford had a great one. What went wrong? We misaligned. What was it? 70% of the touchdowns that they gave up were misalignments. Yeah. And the realization that Lynn had from that was not – the defense doesn't work or we got to put in something or, or do something else. The realization was let's do less crap so that the kids know where to line up on what we do. Like if 70% of the scores were because of a misalignment, what if I just lined up? This is not what, what coach Shackelford did, but uh, I don't think so. But if 70% of the scores were off of a um, misalignment, what do we misalign on? Why don't I throw all this crap out and run a base four two five four four? Doesn't matter what you call it. Cover three and eliminate ninety percent of the misalignments because we don't do anything but this. Like that's boom, system fixed, right? What was the problem with the system? We had too much crap. Well, all that stuff, and again, that wouldn't be fixing your system. All that stuff can stay in the system. 
right? The system's like the cloud. Everything could be in the cloud. This is what I have downloaded, you know, right here, right now to look at. The playbook. So what I learn is, hey, the playbook needs to be smaller. All that crap can stay in the I'll give you an example. You know, just, just again, R4253, all of our defensive systems, they have cover one, cover three, and quarters-based coverages, and split field quarters. Most of the time for us, because we play a lot of wing tees, we play a lot of running attacks, not a lot of high-level passing attacks, most of the time for us, that split field quarters coverage stays in the system, but it doesn't get into the playbook because we just don't need it. Um, we we This year we ran a fair amount of uh, cloud cover two, but most years none of that stuff goes in. And I wouldn't, we weren't exactly, I wasn't the defense coordinator, so it wasn't exactly our system. Uh, but we, you know, it was the same deal, cover three, cover one, three, four base. Um, we lined up in some four, two stuff. We ran some, you know, some blitzes we did, you know, and then we ran some, what I would call cloud cover two corner force. Um, so like what went wrong? If the kids didn't execute the things that you called, that's not a system. And so this is where we, we, we said alignment problem. Well, that's not a problem with your system. That's a problem with getting the kids lined up. Right. Why weren't they lined up right? Were they going no huddle and the kids were frazzled and didn't know where to go? Were you running 17 different fronts and stunts and coverages and calls and they didn't know what to do? Uh, were they, you know, what was the reason they were misaligned? If the kids didn't execute the system, that's not a system problem because you never ran the system. Right, you you didn't run it. Well, what what went wrong? Well, we couldn't set an edge. Okay, like very simple. This is this is I, I'm always frustrated by this. What was the problem with your defense? We couldn't set an edge. Where did you line up your outside linebackers, your force players? A lot of times they didn't even identify a force player. Where do they lined up the the the, the guy that's supposed to set the edge? Defensive end, one by one off the well, – I got an idea. Widen his butt out eight yards, and now we've got an edge. And then slowly move him back in until you've got an edge that doesn't create a horizontal – at least we you – know, don't let anybody get outside of you. I used to joke about we don't say contain because the smart kid would – what's contain mean? It means nobody gets outside of you. And the smart kid, you put him in an outside linebacker, he sprints to the top of the numbers. Well, at least nobody got outside of him, and we can start with that. Okay, can you can you just sprint to the bottom of the numbers, and give me that, or, or or to the you know, can you just go like maybe three yards inside? Like eventually, I'll get you to where you actually need to be, uh, and forcing the play. But what was the problem? Well, in that case, we couldn't set an edge. It was probably just a simple alignment issue, maybe a key read issue. But until you fix the alignment, nothing else is going to matter. What was the problem? Our linebackers didn't fill. Well, I've got news for you. There's no system that fixes that. Right? That is a core tenant of every. There's no system that's like, hey, you got linebackers that can't fill. Come to I got us. The system we, for you. We got the system. No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> you have a drill problem. You have a coaching problem. You have some sort of problem that's not your system. So if your linebackers weren't filling, if your defensive ends weren't spilling, if your outside linebackers or overhang safeties weren't forcing, if your free safety wasn't getting down in the alley, or if none of these words mean anything to you, you don't have a playbook or a system problem. The And now if, if whatever system you have has none of those words in it, you better get them. But it can be applied to every off, every defense that there is. By the right. way, it's also how I, how I scout a defense to figure out how to attack them. I look for where their system is broken because they don't have – Spill, force, alley, stay in coverage. Um, so that's what I mean. You, you you need to identify what went wrong. And chances are it falls into one of those categories. We were misaligned. We didn't execute, which is we didn't spill. We didn't follow pullers. We didn't fill. We didn't force. Uh, we didn't set an edge. Nobody played the alley. Uh, you know, we gave up. You know, we had broken, um, broken coverages, right? Blown coverages. That's not a system problem. Pattern match covered, which probably if you had a lot of blown coverages, it's because you were running pattern match. Pattern match is more complicated and takes more time and investment, but I can tell you that it's not the fault of pattern match that you blew coverages. It's not the X's and O's on the paper that caused you to blow coverages. Now, you may not, you very well may not need 
to be pattern matching. And so the fix is put that back up in the cloud and pull a basic coverage like cover one, cover three out uh, and, and, you know, go more basic. And so that may help you or do a better job of coaching how to pass those guys off because the blown coverage isn't a system. You go to another system that runs pattern match and you will blow coverages again because you didn't learn anything. When you start jumping from X's and, you know, when you start jumping, jumping around from X's and O's to X's and O's, you're not learning anything. So it's, you know, they didn't know what to do. They didn't do it. They didn't get the job done. A lot of times just they didn't know. And you, that means that means it's not the system. It means it's the teachers. Now, the system could be too complicated and you were trying to do too much stuff. That might be it too, but that's on the teachers. They did, we don't have SOLs or whatever you guys call it. We don't have standards that have to be taught every year, right? You don't have to teach your kids 19 coverages. <laughs> so I love it. There's, there's no rule that you've got to go over all of these things. The, the, you, can, you can just simplify it. So that's a teacher problem. Your curriculum sucked. You try to, do, you know, you try to teach fourth year stuff to first year. I'm reading, I'm reading Harry Potter right now. So like you don't teach, you don't teach the first year's fifth year spells, right? That doesn't, doesn't work for Harry, but like he's a, he's a, you know, he's a Prodigy. D1 wizard. He's not a regular wizard. <laughs> he's an iguana. He's, yeah, he's, he's an iguana. Oh, <laughs> but you couldn't, you couldn't teach Neville that stuff. He was barely capable. Oh, I don't even know that name, so that's good for me. I, well, you know what? Um, <laughs> well, I'm I think fine, so. I don't, you know, what, something happens. I don't know. You brought up a really uh, a good point earlier, talking about the hierarchy. Hierarchy. That word of a um, H I E a system, right? R A C H Y hierarchy. That word. Your system. It may not be a system problem. Maybe a playbook problem, right? Absolutely. What are What are you trying to carry this year that you don't need? And almost and always, I, it's too much in the playbook. It's almost never too little. I've seen situations where you probably could use a little bit more, but you've got to get to such a high level with the basics before we can come in and say, you need to add a little more. And it's, I right. probably worked with, I count them on one hand, the number of coaches who I could be like, you need to, you need to put in a little bit more. Cause we know the weakness of, let's just say the four, two, five, mm -hmm. right? We know the weaknesses. Like we know where it's weak. And if that's not the weakness they've found and they're all hitting week after week after week and season after season, it has strengths too. And then if they're if they're catching you where you're supposed to be strong yeah. and um and, and making you look silly, then that like you said, it comes back to a teacher problem. It's um, yeah, if you're getting beat, if you're 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 exactly right. Let's say you're running a four two five and you're like, they're killing us on strong side power. It's like what Right. What are you teaching? That's a um, weakness. You need to, now that I've seen both ends of the spectrum, okay, I've been at the lowest level of 11-man ball in Oklahoma, and I've now been at the highest level of 11-man ball in Oklahoma. There's obviously a difference in the kids. So that's the next thing you got to ask yourself is, is it a system problem, or do I realistically just not have the athletes? Because there's going to be teams out there. You can only assemble so many sets of Avengers before we're like, other kids, assemble, okay? And you're going to lose some games. There's, you may be running the 4-2-5 and you can't stop strong side power because you just don't have the athlete. Maybe you need to be asking, should you be in an odd front? Maybe, I don't know. You need to be figuring out what fronts, what coverages fit your kids. Um I can tell you that if you're getting beat on strong side power, it is almost 100% that your defensive end is not spilling. Right. Period. And so... If you're 4 2 five. That's, that's a conversation you need, you need to have. Like, Listen, after, after talking with my fellow co-workers and, and some, some guys I've worked with in the past and talking with Kenny, like, I know that coaches get that any program can be saved mentality. Yeah, there's guys out there like, oh, I see their head job came open. I'm going to go save it. And I'm going to turn it into the next powerhouse in Class A football. And sometimes there's a reason why they can't keep someone there. Okay? Um, and it's just a talent pool. The DNA pool is not strong. 
Uh, there's a million other reasons, right? You can get all the admin and all that crazy. There's, yeah, it's usually admin. Usually, admin is going to be your biggest limiting factor. Yes. Uh, um, you, know, you need to make sure that you. you're not trying to run a system that you don't have the athletes to run. If you're trying to run the Miami 4-3 uh, and you don't have Miami 4-3 kids, there's a reason why we call it the Miami 4-3. They were very successful with it. And what, like 11 of 11 of them went to the NFL. So, yes. <laughs> they, Linebackers they, ran four threes and four, <laughs> four fours and four fives across the board. Yeah. So just make sure that your system fits your kids. You um, and, and, if it, and you can keep the same tenets and all of the, the pillars and whatever else you want to call them, the things that make you you, and just change a little bit of stuff. And that's what I think you need to start evaluating about your system. Is like, does this allow me to make any squad functional and for whatever their limit is successful. Okay. We talked about ceilings when we started the podcast and are, are they legitimately a playoff squad? Because they could just not be, but you can't go blaming a system just because you didn't reach the playoffs in your second year. Uh, when your ceiling is four wins, there's just, it just, you can't do it. So, evaluating what your ceiling is, what you're actually supposed to be able to do, and then did you reach that is great. So I will, I, I, real quick, because we, we said evaluate, what I would do to evaluate is I would create a, you know, for, for Coach Shackelford, it was touchdowns, right? They looked at touchdowns. Um, I would look at whatever it is for you that equates to the, the, the problem, um, we gave up too many explosive plays. Okay, so go through your huddle and, you know, hopefully you've got, you know, assist or something where you've been tagging it all year and the stuff is tagged. Go through your huddle and... I just tagged 694 plays of offense in the last week. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> because I just wanted certain stuff. <laughs> yeah. So go through and pull all of the 20 plus yard plays you gave up offensively. If you feel like the problem was we couldn't run this play, or let's say we couldn't throw the ball. We couldn't, you know, if, if you couldn't throw the ball is the problem, go through and look at all of the incompletions, every single one of them that you had, look at them. And this is very important. Don't do it the day after your season ends because you're still pissed off. I'm a week. I'm a week after the season ends. I'm still pissed off. I can't do this yet. Go through and look at it as if look at it as if you're me getting film from somebody. I don't know your kids. I don't look at whether or not that kid can do it or whatever. I just look at is it getting done or is it not? So look at why that play didn't work. And on each one of those plays, there's a reason it didn't work. You know, take incompletions. If I look at every single one of those incompletions, the, the, the pass protection broke down, the quarterback threw a bad ball, the quarterback made the wrong decision, the receiver ran the wrong route, the receiver dropped the ball, or they just played it perfectly and the, somebody made a play. If what you find is that all of the plays that didn't work were because somebody made a play, but you did everything else right, then you just didn't, you didn't, you know, you, you didn't have the dudes, right? Or maybe your system needs, you know, is so wrong that like, you know, maybe you were running cover three beaters against, or maybe you were running, you know, for example, you were running four verts against quarters every single snap. Well, you're just running straight into, you know, four, Where four they outs. Want you. They, it just became, <laughs> it just became one-on-ones across the board and their dudes are better than yours and, and that, it doesn't work. But go through it, make a, make a, if it is, we didn't set an edge, make a playlist of every single outside run that went for eight yards or more. Cause we could pretty much say at that point, we didn't set an edge or you can say five yards or more, whatever, whatever number, whatever number, first of all, it needs to be a number that makes you feel like this is the right thing to look at. And it needs to be a number that is like, if you're like, we didn't set an edge, but you also had the number one defense in all the land. And, you know, so the ones where you didn't set an edge gave up five yards, then you should be looking at everything that, you know, with three yards or more. If you're a team that, you know, didn't set an edge meant that they ran for 65. Maybe you just want to look at the the long runs. 
um, and, you know, outside explosive plays. Um, make a playlist with all of those. Go through, watch it, have your have your real live paper notebook and write down. It will mean more if you write it down by hand. It really will. Don't don't put notes in huddle. Write write these things down. Um, every single snap, what went wrong? And again, go through then go through, okay, if it was alignment, we need to we need to fix the alignment issue. If it was, um, you know, this or that, and I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll go, but I'll go to, uh, if, if you aren't in JDFB, there's a, there's a 80% chance if you're not in JDFB and your issue was not setting an edge that you will not identify the actual problem. So then you can come see me. Um, if you don't know what the problem was, that's a big indicator to get, get, get some help, figure it out. It's not the kid, by the way. It can't be the, it, it absolutely cannot be the, unless the kid just got manhandled, right? I had a sophomore, Morgan Moses, who's still in the NFL, and this was 15 years ago. Morgan Moses was a tackle. They were running Bill Mountjoy's offense. They were running truck toss, and they were coming out on a sophomore with Morgan Moses pulling to kick my outside linebacker. Okay. The problem was not my 140 pound outside linebacker, the problem was not the system. The problem was not the coaches. The problem was NFL offensive lineman, sophomore, 140 pounds. That'll happen. Last question here. We've we've been going a while. This has been a good one. Um, what ep- updates and changes can you make without a wholesale change? So what are some of the things you can make? Let's just cover a few offense and a few defense because – Simplify is already off the table. Yeah. Yeah. Simplify is already off the table. Um, Do you, so here's my thinking. We we talk about the system needs to cover everything that you could possibly want to do in an organized manner. And then your playbook needs to be what you think is going to work that year. For instance, the team that I'm assisting coaching right now has been an inside and outside zone team for 10 years. In fact, uh, when I talked to, they have co-OCs, and I talked to both OCs the last couple days, and they both said um, two years ago they did not run a single gap scheme play. It was zone all night. Now it's opposite, right? So the last two years um, they've got some, both of our offensive tackles are absolute studs. Um, We've got a quarterback throw it around a little bit, but primarily we still want to run the ball. And with those two tackles and everybody giving us four eyes anyways, uh, down blocking a four eye with a D1 offensive tackle is, is a pretty easy thing to do. Right? That's pretty easy to identify. And so their gap scheme, right? Because it fits what they have. And this is a teams that have dudes everywhere. Every position can realistically be a dude. Lord have mercy, I was looking in the, the sidelines today at the kids that aren't going to touch the field this year, and I went, that's, that's a full starting team everywhere else I've been. So... They're all dudes, and they still took part of the playbook and went, not or part of the system, I'm sorry, and said, that's not in our playbook this year. Okay, so I think that's the biggest one, is just identifying what your kids can do. Not, not even what they can do. What best suits them? You have to get away from what can we get away with and what can we do this year to what are we going to be really good at. And instead of going, power isn't working tonight because insert your reason here, uh, this four eye is, is too hard for my tackle to dig in on and he's just following a, a guard, add a rule that lets your guard down block that guy and let your tackle pull, right? Like, there's other ways to get the same job done and run a play that still is really good for 10 out of, or 9 out of 11 players and you just need to figure out how to get these two guys aligned. So, that would I think that's my recommendation. Without making a wholesale change, number one, carry everything and be educated as a coach and know how to coach it all within your system, your container, if you will, and uh, and and to know how to make those changes on the flies. Know football well enough that you can uh, you don't have to change power, but now it just looks like dart. Yeah, and it, you you won't get that right away though. You you start with this is who we're going to be. This is what we're going to do. And you focus in on it and you get great, I, especially offensively. I always, but defensively too, it's your base, but offensively, I always think that 
when we talk about what needs to be in a play in a in an offensive playbook. Um, it goes back to that youth playbook I talked about: an inside run, an outside run, an off tackle, or an inside run, an off tackle run, an outside run, and a counter. You need to play action off of one of those, not off of every single one of them. Um, maybe some quick game. That's you know, then just screen draw whatever. Um, you, you call it a day. And within that whole playbook, I, I always encourage our coaches that are just coming in. Which one do you want to get great at? And a lot of times, it's power. Okay, but the the key is this is the levers principle. What is the one thing that you can fix or that you can do that makes everything else better? Well, if you're great at power, then when they stop power, it's because someone else is getting there. So if they're stopping power because they're adjusting their alignment to your strong side, to your tight end, their uh, linebackers flying over, you know, their backside linebacker is killing it and counters them. They're stopping power because the outside linebacker, the force player is getting involved, then tosses open. If they're stopping counter by the corner coming out of coverage and coming down on you, or they stop your toss play, they keep the, they keep the safety in there. So the power's taken away. Uh, but now they're stopping your toss play because the corner is screaming up on toss. Okay. Well then you run power pass and you throw the ball over top of the over aggressive corner by being great at power. And I don't have to be great at any of those plays because, um, or they, if they widen everybody out, now I run wedge or I run inside trap or anywhere inside zone or whatever your inside run play is. All of those plays can be very average, very pedestrian. Just, just get by. I don't coach at the same detail level that I coach power because I don't call those plays unless they're open, unless I have an advantage for them. And so when you, when you run your playbook, you decide this is what I'm, what's going to be the feature. And you get great at the details of that. Um, so yeah, I, you, you won't have everything. You won't know how to coach everything if you're just coming into, you know, an offense or defense, but you get great at uh, on defense. I talk about the non-negotiables, which is you can't, you can't play for us. If you can't squeeze a down block, you can't play for us. if You can't follow a puller. You can't play for us. If you can't force the run, you can't play for us. If you can't stay in coverage, um, you know, be disciplined in coverage. You, those are the non-negotiables. If I have somebody who can do all of those things, then we're going to be pretty good. And then we just go tweaking it from there. I would say one of the first things that I would look at is if it's an execution issue, what are your drills? Well, first of all, do you have the the first thing that I would do? And, and this is going to be very simple. I'll give you the very, very simple and quick answer. Ask a alignment stance, key read assignment on defense. Alignment stance, communication and assignment on offense. It was either ASKA or ASCA. But that's what it boils down to. So when you, the things that you can fix, do you need to fix alignment issues? Do you have stance issues? Do you have key read issues? Do you have assignment issues? But very simply, do I need to widen out my safety so I can get a better force? Do I need to, to uh, clean up my linebacker key read so that he follows guards and fills? Um, do I need to, and I, and I may need to fix my alignment on my linebacker and fix his key reads. Uh, but, and then how am I going to do that? Well, that's drills. You know, my coverage, was I getting hurt on coverage because we weren't dropping deep enough or because, you know, is it a key read or is it a assignment issue? My, my guy doesn't know where to go on cover three or on quarters or whatever, or, you know, what was the problem? So it's, it's very simply going to come down to the things that you can do on offense. It's going to come down to uh, the footwork of the offensive line is the number one issue, the number two issue. Uh, and then it can go, we can also go into the footwork and the exchanges. If you had a lot of fumbles and issues like that, the exchanges, I watch teams sometimes and I'm like, their biggest issue is the snap. And I'm like, just go under center. Your plays suck right now. Cause you can't even catch, you can't. You know, so on offense, it's going to be um, often it's the footwork, but it very well may be the alignment and it could be the footwork of the offensive line. It can be the footwork of the backfield. It can be the footwork of the receivers, not taking their right steps on their routes. Are all of those things very, very clearly defined. And one of the biggest, I'll tell you that one of the simplest things that you can do is get super detailed in everything that you have in your offense. Um, everything that you do, everything you expect to do, get, get, 
extremely pinpoint detailed in it. Make sure that's number one. Uh, offensively, alignment may be a major, it's not one that people think about with offense. But if your receiver's alignment and splits are erratic, then you're causing the quarterback to throw a different throw every single time. We talk about in our offensive system, there's basically a quick game throw and there's a, there's a, a, a five-step throw. It's all the same throw. A deep out, the receiver starts with an eight-yard split. He runs his out. He catches it at 12 yards, 12, 10 to 12 yards down the field, 12 yards wide. A curl is a nine-step curl. He's going to catch it at 10 yards, 12 yards wide. He's going to catch deep out at 12 yards, 10 yards, or 12 yards wide, 10 yards deep. He's going to catch curl at the same spot. He's going to catch post at the same spot. Post is going to line up a little wider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Break two steps to the post. He's going to catch it at 12 yards, 10 yards deep down the field. 12 yards wide, 10 yards. It's the same throw every single time. But if the alignment's wrong, that's not going to work. The big one, though, is the run game. If your run game, you've got to look at the timing of the run game. And everything that you do, pass-wise and run-wise, should be centered around shortening the amount of time, minimizing the amount of time that your offensive line has to stay engaged in the block. Like, if you are if you look at your film and you go, our offensive lineman needs to spend more time on the sled, you're missing the boat, dude. That ain't it. That ain't it. You need to minimize the amount of time that they need to stay engaged in the block. That means the quarterback needs to get rid of the ball faster. That means that the alignment of the back, if your back is lined up at nine yards and the quarterback takes the snap and pistol and he stands there and he waits for the kid to get there on inside zone, you have a timing issue. The offensive linemen are having to stay engaged in the block for two or three seconds, and they shouldn't. He should hit. If you run power, as soon as the kickout block hits, bam, the kickout block hits. And as soon as the wrapper gets there, he's right on his tail. Like, that's timing. If the wrapper's coming through, blocking the front side linebacker, and then your kid's finally getting there, and the hole was open, and now the hole, that's a really good way to look at it. The hole opened, and then it closed. You have a timing issue. The hole was there, then it closed. You have a timing issue. Because they made the hole. You were just too late getting there. You, you can't ask for any more than them to make the hole. So you have a timing issue. Um, and that's an, that's usually alignment or it could be footwork. Um, can also be stance. There's some issues with stance on defensive line especially. There's a lot of issues often with defensive line and stance. Wrong hand down, wrong foot down, so they can't get their footwork right. They, they never will. Uh, there's just no way to do it. They'll get base blocked out because they're going to have the inside foot up. They're going to be off balance, and it's, it's not going to work. Um, right. Again, and then and then you you build drills around what you need to do. You look at your playbook um, and you simplify your playbook. You you shouldn't be running a lot of drills if you're like we're going to need 18 drills to get these kids ready. You need you need three a uh, five max, five max because you need to run those. If you don't run those drills every single week, they won't work. You need to run them multiple times in the week. Um, you know, you, at some point you're at a maintenance level, but they won't work if you're if you, if you have 26 of them because you can't that or you're running like a 50 minute indie and your kids are just bored out of their minds and you want to go home too. <laughs> I uh, speaking of drills, and we'll we'll close out after this. I was listening to Kyle Shanahan talk today about they were asking about his quarterbacks, Brock Purdy, to be specific. Um, having a quarterback coach outside of the organization, which if you remember last year, Denver Broncos hired Sean Payton and he made a big mess about that, right? Like right. we will not have an outside quarterback coach. And Kyle Shanahan was like, yeah, somebody's got to teach him technique. I'm, I'm not a quarterback, right? He, I mean, he just was like, look, we're in season. I'm teaching him how to be successful against a certain team this week. Right. I'm not teaching him how to throw a damn football. And it just made me laugh because – Sometimes I think our drills get so we we're worried about too much stuff, right? I think sometimes our drills are just worrying about too much stuff. And in our our end, you 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 do need to teach fundamentals because you don't have that kid in the off season. That's kind of what Kyle was getting at. Was yeah, well, your quarterback should it. be the kid that can throw. By the way, right, right. Uh, and then and then I have I would never care about you know him getting outside coaching on his throwing mechanics and stuff. That's fine. No, He's right. not getting outside coaching on the playbook. They're not going through how to make reads and stuff. Right. So that's perfectly fine. I have kids go to quarterback camps, go to good quarterback camps, go to a good quarterback camp, and they'll come back and it's like, man, like the best day that they have is, uh, you know, like to me, that's like going to a long snapper camp. It's like, you know, what the difference does the scheme make? Like he just throws the right. ball between his legs, get it back there 14 yards. Like the so, quarterback, you know, 
I don't, you're exactly right. My quarterback's indie time is exchanges because we can't put the ball on the ground and we've got to get the timing right. So it's run game exchanges and then throwing our routes. And we talk to him about, you know, we can talk to him about his mechanics during those times, but it's about making the read and getting the ball out. His mechanics work is in the off season and during his, you know, 10 minutes of warm up exactly. he has at the beginning of practice. The off season was, was what uh, Coach Shanahan was pointing yeah, at it, today it, it, was, Hey, look, we, we stopped when the season started. We it's, it's about winning a game. Now it's not a, uh, yeah. If he can't be a quarterback, quarterback, I'll find another mechanics quarterback. Is just about keeping him from breaking. Cause most likely what happens if he's not throwing the ball well is something his mechanics is broken and you have to get that back. Yeah. He can already throw. You don't, you don't have time to teach him how to throw. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was a really good yeah. conversation for him to bring up to the media because they were trying to, you know how the media is, man. Well, they don't you know how that. people are. Humans are, they just want to mess up things that are going well. And here Brock Purdy's having a good year. So I don't even think that they, it's not even that they don't know. Sometimes it's just like, there's other ulterior motives. Yeah. Whether, you know, we talk about the the announcers and it's like, I know some of these announcers really know football, but when they like, you know, we joke about like, oh, he's calling that a RPO, like everything that, everything that has a ride and a throw is an RPO. Um, it's like, you know, play action still exists, but like, I, you know, they, they say things that are just, and I, I don't think that those guys don't know football. I think that they're the ulterior motive is of trying to simplify this for the people who aren't football coaches listening. Right. I always talk about the, the, the one quarter that they let Don Shula call a game. It was the greatest quarter that I've ever watched because it was just so awesome. And they couldn't wait to get him off the air because I'm sure that there were 15 million people who were like, what the hell is he talking about? Well, Tony Romo's that guy now, right? He came in and was like, he was calling plays. Yeah, he, yeah. Hey, this is about to happen. Watch this. And he'll draw it in the yellow thing, the old John Madden. And then he, does, he manages to kind of like explain it. To I feel people. like that first year he was very, yes. I loved it. I want. I only wanted him calling games. Yes, and then people are like, "This is so over my head." Well, it's anyway. like when you watch the the film room during the national championship games, and I'm like, "This is amazing! Why don't they do this every year?" And then I noticed, like, the next year they kind of like pulled back a little bit. It wasn't the same, but also nobody watches it. Yeah, like we're the only ones that care. But like, I will record the film room and I will watch it, and That's I, awesome. you know, I, I will watch the game because it's the game is exciting, and then I will go back and watch the film room later. They also like by the fourth, third quarter are just tired and they're just like sitting there uh, and they're all on their phone texting recruits and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like, I guess just, you know, wrapping it up. It's not that you don't need a system. I mean, it's not that you shouldn't ever change your system. It's that you should be in one that you can stick with forever. And so if you've got a system now, you wait it and figure out what went wrong. It's not the system. The only way that it, I mean, like you may need to change if you are an air raid, let's say, mm -hmm. and there's not really a contingency plan for the year. You don't have a quarterback. Um, that's not that hard to do it, but you know, let's say that that's, let's say that then maybe you need to change the system. Uh, if legitimately kids are quitting or not playing because you run a double wing offense and you've just got like, receivers all over the field that are receivers all over the building that don't want to play for you. Like maybe there's a need for a change, in that. but it's the system is not the reason that things aren't working. If you have one, you may be missing parts of the system or, or, you know, needing to fix things. Um, and if you're still in that mindset of like, I don't want to run a system or like that, that very, very antiquated mindset, when Tony Franklin's system came out, this was very common. A lot of people thought this. I, I was one of them. It was the first Tony Franklin came out very, very early in my coaching career. And it was like, what's the fun in that? If the guy just sends you all your plays and you just run them and all your drills, and it's like, that's not how it works. If you're, if you're still in that antiquated mindset, you need to get out of it. But that's not how it works. Trust me, you can have plenty of fun and you can screw plenty of stuff up on your own, even with the system. Yeah, that's that's half the fun of it, right? Is getting a good knowledge base and then mixing it up a little bit. Like, I don't know. You still got to solve the problems every night. So, all right, man, let's get out of here. Paying the bills. Join .com. Get access for a buck. Gives you seven days of access. Um, I guess you can go game plan a guy that you know that runs pistol power offense. That would I've never thought about that. 